Alright guys, back for another week and back for plenty more championship transfer rumours. We've got loads to talk through today, let's jump in. Starting out with the done deals, we saw Coventry completing a deal for Burnley defender Bobby Thomas in a deal worth up to £2 million with add-ons included. Now we've already seen Coventry splashing quite a bit of cash so far, all in all around £10 million. Obviously they received a bunch of that from the sale of Victor Jokeres, around £20 million in the end, and they've wasted no time in reinvesting into the rest of their squad. Quite like this deal for Bobby Thomas, we reported previously on another episode of the Championship Rumour Roundup that Coventry were interested in taking the Burnley defender. Obviously, they had Luke McNally on loan from Burnley last season, another player who they do hold an interest in. But Bobby, Bobby Thomas's potential, I think, is obvious to see. He had a really successful loan spell with Barnsley in League One last season, where he spent the second half of that season on loan. 22 years old, only flaw to this deal is the fact that Thomas hasn't yet played any Championship football, so a fee of up to two million could be seen as quite steep by some but the way Coventry have recruited so far I think this is another really positive addition for the future. Birmingham have sealed a deal for Keshi Anderson the former Blackpool winger have been on trial with Birmingham and overall I think he adds a decent squad option into that squad someone who will have a bit of trickery and flair prior to that injury that kept him out for the vast majority of last season thought he was a really useful player for Blackpool in the championship and definitely will add a little bit of spark and flair from the bench. Stoke have completed the loan deal for Wolves winger Chiquino, very much looking forward to seeing how he gets on in the championship having watched a few of the compilation reels from his time in Portugal. He joined Wolves in January 2022 but missed the entirety of last season with an ACL injury so Stoke will have to carefully nurse him back to full fitness. Based off the reviews I've seen, very much looking forward to seeing how he gets on in Alex Neil's setup. Kiana Hover also completed the loan deal over to Stoke. He did spend the second half of last season on loan from Wolves and they've since snapped him up on a loan deal once again. Had a real goal scoring touch from fullback last season scored 4 goals in 15 championship appearances. I'm sure the Stoke fans are buzzing to get that deal over the line. Preston completed the deal for young Liverpool forward Leighton Stewart. Very much on board with this sort of recruitment. I think in years gone by this is what Preston used to be excellent at. Picking players up from Premier League academies, going on to develop them and ultimately flip them on for a profit and it's the sort of recruitment strategy that we have gone away from in recent years so I'm absolutely buzzing to get back on board with this type of business. Had a good goal scoring record in the Premier League 2 last season. Scored 11 goals and 17 appearances for Liverpool. 20 years old, by no means the final product, but definitely got a potential and ceiling in the game that Ryan Loken looked to develop on. Millwall completed the deal for versatile Belgium defender Casper Denor. Played a lot of his football at fullback, either left or right back, but can also operate as a holding midfielder as well, so I'm very interested to see where Gary Rowett goes ahead and plays him. We've seen quite a few championship clubs turning to Europe for their recruitment this summer and this being another example of that. Wes Hardin has also joined up with Millwall. He joins on a free transfer upon his contract with Rotherham running out. Think on a free transfer. That's another solid bit of business there by Millwall. Watford completed the deal for Jake Livermore. He comes over on a free transfer signing a one-year deal obviously linking up with Valor and Ishmael. Uh, the two of them previously worked together at West Brom. Honestly thought Livermore did look a little bit like a bit of a spent force at times for the Baggies last season made 17 appearances total in the championship 10 of those being starts it's only on a short term basis though and I get that he will add that bit more experience into that Watford midfield maybe another leader in the dressing room that they were perhaps lacking at times last season as well in terms of his overall impact on the pitch I'm not sure how big that's going to be next season if I'm honest. Huddersfield completed the deal for Chris Maxwell, I think if he's coming in as a backup goalkeeper that's a solid option there for Huddersfield had plenty to do last season at Blackpool and while there were a few mistakes in there, the amount of shots he was bombarded with per game, I think it was, you know, expected really that a few of those would creep in. All in all, I think that's a decent deal for Huddersfield. Massive deal for Plymouth. They have completed the deal for Bolly Mumper on a permanent basis in a deal worth up and around £1 million. Great bit of business, I feel, from Plymouth. Honestly, feel like Norwich could have squeezed them for a little bit more money, in all honesty. But I think for both parties, this could end up being the best thing. Mumper gets his move back to Plymouth, where he absolutely thrived last season. Six goals, seven assists from that wing-back position. From a Norwich perspective, totally get the frustration at the moment. The flip of the coin is, would he be a fit into that David Wagner system next season, given he doesn't tend to play with wing-backs? It's an interesting debate to have. But at 21, I feel like Plymouth are getting an absolutely fantastic player with such a high ceiling in terms of his overall potential and I mean we did quite a bit of talking at the start of the summer how would Plymouth go about replacing the lone players 
players from last season, the impact they had on that squad. Well, the deals they've done over this past week or so, getting Mumba and Whitaker both on a permanent basis, I think is a massive boost to their survival hopes for next season and maybe even pushing up further up the league. And we saw Ipswich striking a brilliant deal with Chelsea, getting Amari Hutchinson on loan for the season. We reported way earlier on in the window that Chelsea were willing to sanction a loan deal and make no mistakes about it, countless championship clubs would have been sifting around the deal for Hutchinson. So the fact that Ipswich have got this deal over the line, I think is a real testament to them and their ambitions right now. He's got a crack record in youth football and this will be his first proper chance now at senior level to show what he can do. I think it'll be the right environment for him to thrive in at Ipswich under a good manager and coach with a fan base who's fully behind that team right now and will add potentially that bit of stardust to their side next season in the final third. We saw Hull complete a deal for Ruben Vinagre bringing him on loan from Sporting for the season. Looking forward to seeing him back in the Championship. We previously saw him with Wolves of course. Only real drawback to this deal is the fact that he barely kicked a ball last season while out on loan with Everton but sure he's going to be afforded plenty more first team opportunities this season in that whole setup and when he's at his flying best like we've seen with Wolves previously there is a hell of a player in there especially for championship level. Hobby Barnes has completed his move to Newcastle in a deal worth £38 million. I think Leicester have ended up with a decent deal for this one. Some huge fees coming in for both Harvey Barnes and James Madison who left earlier in the window. We've seen Leicester themselves doing some big spending comparatively for the championship so far, but it is justified with the big fees they've got coming in for some of their players. But guys, those are some of the deals we've seen go through in the championship over these last few days. Now without any further ado, let's jump into the transfer rumours. There is quite a bit of championship interest in Blackburn forward Sam Gallagher, but Rovers reportedly value the player up and around £5 million. The club's said to be interested both Coventry and Stoke at this point, but neither club would be willing to meet Blackburn's five million asking price. Now, Galli is uh, quite an interesting one. Originally, Rovers did spend quite a bit of money on him to get him out of Southampton, and as it goes, as an overall footballer, I actually think he brings quite a bit to the table. He always seems to have an absolute worldie of a game against my side, North End, as well. So on the eye test, he always passes that because he always has a good game against us. For a goal-scoring return, though, he's not quite that prolific outlet who you can hang your hat on to be the top scorer every season. In the Championship for Blackburn, he tends to average around eight goals per season, which, when you consider everything else he brings to the table, I think is a decent return. But in terms of an out-and-out -out scorer, he's just not that sort of guy. And for £5 million, I think you'd expect that sort of player to be putting up significantly more numbers. So Rovers, in this instance, I think would either need to drop their asking price for the player or you know, buckle down and keep him for the season because I can't see Coventry or Stoke going that far. But if they were to lower that asking price by a million or two, maybe I could see a few more teams buy Tim. Ishmael Assar is on his way to Marseille. As of recording, he's currently having his medical and that deal is expected to go through. Sars had some mixed fortunes in a Watford shirt, it's probably fair to say. Let's not forget this is a player who Watford originally spent around 27 million on to get him in at the club. And while he has put up decent numbers in the past, it's always felt like, especially at championship level, there's always been a little bit more potentially to come from him because we all know his talent level. Last season in the championship, in what probably was a bit of an underwhelming season, all things considered, he still chipped in with 17 goal contributions. The money that's been talked about at the moment, anywhere from 13 to 20 million, it looks like Watford may go ahead and recoup from this deal, but I think most Watford fans were probably expecting a sale to go through this summer with Saar. And yeah, it'd be interesting to get some Watford takes down below. Watch your overall takeaway from Sars' time at the club. Jamal Lewis is a wanted man for a couple of championship clubs right now. Both Watford and Swansea are exploring a potential loan deal for the Newcastle fullback. Now, Jamal Lewis does look surplus to requirements at Newcastle right now. Doesn't look like he'll be getting much game time going forward either, and so a move this summer could well be on the cards. Watford were the first team credited with interest, but Swansea have since been mentioned in the conversation. It's no secret that Swansea looking to add a new left back to their side. We previously spoke about the links to Lee Buchanan who remains a target for Swansea but an alternate one would be Jamal Lewis who I think would be a 
quite a savvy pickup for any championship club re really we've seen what he's done previously at this level with Norwich and given that lack of game time recently I think a move to the championship could be the best thing for his career right now Middlesbrough have been handed the blow in their pursuit of Ryan Giles as Luton are now stepping up their interest in the Wolves man who are said to be confident of striking a deal of around about £5 million now it's no secret that Middlesbrough would be massively keen on getting Giles back on a permanent basis he was absolutely fantastic last season one of the best creative outlets from that left hand side in the championship last season we've seen him for quite some time be one of the best creators in the championship based on his several last loan spells at this level but a permanent move could be on the cards this summer and Luton are growing in confidence in getting a deal done of, like I said, around about £5 million. So as it does look more than likely that Middlesbrough will miss out on the deal for Ryan Giles, they're having to go after some alternative target. Alex Bangura has been their latest target in the left-back department. The Sierra Leone International just coming off the back of a solid enough season in the Eredivisie where he featured in 29 matches. He is now heading into the last year of his contract as well and would reportedly be available for around about half a million pounds which would be significantly cheaper than Giles albeit not quite got the same pedigree. And Preston have been handed a huge boost in pursuit of Everton forward Tom Cannon. As of recording it seems like a loan deal could be in the works and things could be in motion for Cannon to rejoin Preston on a loan deal for the upcoming season. This one would be huge news for Preston and I have to admit up until these recent developments I wasn't holding up much hope of Preston getting Cannon back because we've been in this situation before with Archer I just wasn't prepared to get my heart broken again but this one would be a serious coup for Preston for the season even just on a season long loan his goals for the year would be absolutely vital to us last season in the championship Cannon scored 8 goals in the second half of the season averaging a goal every 209 minutes in the championship if projected over an entire championship season that same ratio would be worth 19.8 goals which for a club like Preston how desperately we struggle for goals last season that is an absolutely huge boost to us what's more as well is it does seem as if Cannon himself has even snubbed some interest from fellow championship clubs who were also interested to take him on loan seemingly wanting the loan return to Preston because he knows the squad and area obviously so well from last season so as of recording it's not yet over the line but all the signs are looking very promising which is great news for Preston my side Preston have also been linked with a move for Sheffield Wednesday's Dominic Iorfa this would be a deal that I'd absolutely be all over. I think Iortha would be the sort of profile of centre-half that we are missing at the club at the moment and with only one year left to run on his deal at Sheffield Wednesday, potentially there is a bit of a bargain that could be struck with this one. Now from Wednesday's perspective I don't think they can really be affording to let go of many players while their squad is as thin as it is. They need to be bringing players in really before going ahead and sanctioning any sales but from a Preston point of view, the centre-half position is definitely one that I would look to strengthen. We do have numbers in that area, but in terms of bringing in players who fit the bill and will allow us to play a little bit further up the pitch with that bit more recovery pace and physicality about them, I'd absolutely be all over this sort of deal. Southampton forward Che Adams has been linked to a fair few Premier League clubs and it's currently being reported that both Wolves and Bournemouth are in the driving seat right now as the favourites to land his signature this summer. Given the amount of interest so far and how much we've discussed Adams, it does seem more than likely that a move will be on the cards this summer especially considering he's only got one more year left to run on his deal at Southampton and interesting with the Che Adams news we've also got a little bit of an update on Ross Stewart as well as Southampton have moved into the driving seat and are the current favourites to snap up the Sunderland forward now it's currently being reported that Stoke aren't willing to go past the five million mark for Stewart whereas Southampton could be prepared to pay more than that. Ross Stewart, you really do get that double-edged sword. Fantastically prolific record in the championship from last season, but coming off the back of a massive injury now. With only one year left to run on his deal at Sunderland, it's going to be a very interesting few weeks in terms of his future. Southampton are said to be keen on Leicester City midfielder Hamza Chowdhury. Chowdhury's only got one year left on his deal at Leicester, and Russell Martin is said to be a big fan of the midfielder who spent last season out on loan at Watford. We're expecting still quite a bit of movement with Southampton, 
Henderson and their midfielders. Lavia, for example, still been linked with that move to Liverpool, but the Saints holding out with that £50 million evaluation on him, which Liverpool aren't yet prepared to make. And the future of James Ward-Prowse still remains to be up in the air. He's still a Southampton player at this point in time, but West Ham aren't giving up on their chase of the Southampton captain just yet. Has been reported that earlier in the window, West Ham were knocked back with a verbal approach they made for the midfielder, and the club has been tipped to return with an official bid, but no movement on that deal just yet. We all knew that Norwich were looking to add some more goals and creativity to their squad, and it appears as if they're doing just that with the addition of Christian Fasnack. This deal looks to be close to completion as of recording. Quite the coup for Norwich, this one, as they appear to have fended off interest from Germany and Turkey to go ahead and land this deal. He's had a terrific career in the Swiss Super League for young boys, where he scored 72 goals across 241 appearances. He already knows David Wagner well from Wagner's time coaching at young boys, and so there's already that established connection there. Having glanced over a few of the compilations so far, this would be a sign that I get excited about. There we have it though, guys. Those are some of the most recent transfer rumours we've seen going around the Championship. Any others, do get them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for tuning in. Plenty of content coming out on the channel this week, and I'll see you all in the next one.